हेलो गाइस दिस इज अदिप वेलकम टू माय चैनल मूवमेंट साइंस वेयर आई सिंपलीफाई बायो मैकेनिक्स एंड लॉट ऑफ ऑर्थो टॉपिक्स विद जो सो इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल कंसीडर सब्सक्राइबिंग आल्सो चेक मी आउट ऑन इंस्टाग्राम वेयर आई पोस्ट पिक्चर्स ऑफ माय नोट्स एंड आल्सो पुट आउट डेली एमसीक्यूज विद व्हिच यू कैन ब्रश अप योर बायो मैकेनिक्स द रेफरेंस टाइम फॉर ऑल द टॉपिक्स दैट आई एम गोइंग टू कवर विल बी मेंशनड आउट इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन सो चेक दैट आउट एंड लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड In this video we are going to talk about the lateral and the medial rotators of the hip joint and we'll be finishing off the kinetics topic of the hip joint so starting with the lateral rotators of the hip there are a lot of them but they are pretty easy to remember so let's go back to our main page so we had seen the lateral rotators over here so what you need to remember over here is just the obturator and the gemellus right obturator then there is internus externus gemellus there is superior inferior then there is a quadratus femoris and then piriformis which is there on the both sides right which is a common medial as well as a lateral rotator according to the uh, change in the position of the hip which happens for other muscles too which we will discuss soon so let's start with the topic so first talking about the lateral rotators in general there are six of them they are positioned to perform lateral rotation now this cannot be denied if you look over here this is your pelvis right and this is your femur over here and all these muscles they are perpendicularly arranged to your femur so when they contract they laterally rotate your femur right your femur is like this and they are attached like this from the posterior aspect so when they contract they laterally rotate your femur so that is pretty obvious then going to the uh, next important part is they are very ideal for tonic stabilization at the hip joint in weight bearing as well as non weight bearing so if you look at their position they are very parallel and they'll keep your femur tight in place that is the tonic stabilization right so their function can change with position but sometimes it they'll have a constant function so what do i mean by this with hip flexion when there is hip flexion occurring they'll create a compressive force and they'll keep the femur in place at the pelvis at the acetabulum right the head of the femur and the acetabulum will be in place by this compressive force just like your rotator cuff in shoulder joint if you remember so that way they'll keep the uh, stabilization of the hip really well however they won't change their compressive line of action this compressive line of action won't be changed because they are parallel to your femoral neck so this is your femoral head neck and shaft right so this neck part these muscles are very parallel to the neck so hence no matter there is flexion or extension occurring this function of theirs that is the compressive function will comparatively remain constant throughout the range of motion because they are always parallel to the femoral neck so now let's go to the individual muscles and see what are their clinical significances or where they are attached and how they function so coming to the first muscle that is the piriformis which is a very clinically significant muscle so it starts from the anterior surface of the sacrum so your sacrum is there it's on the anterior surface of the sacrum goes to the sciatic notch and then goes and attaches to the medial part of the greater trochanter over here now over here the clinical significance of piriformis is that it goes from the sciatic notch where the sciatic nerve it passes just underneath the piriformis muscle so if this is your piriformis muscle the sciatic nerve goes underneath the piriformis muscle so what happens is when your piriformis muscle sometimes it gets it gets tight so when there is tightness of this piriformis muscle it will press on the sciatic nerve and that can give us sciatica pain right the pain radiating from the sciatic nerve can be caused due to tightness of the piriformis muscle now this is called as the fake sciatica or the false sciatica because the true sciatica happens when there is a disc bulge on top right so sciatica now uh, sciatic now which comes from the top like this when there is protrusion or disc bulge and this disc compresses on the sciatic now that's when you get the sciatica pain but sometimes the same sciatica pain can be felt due to the tightness of the piriformis muscle and can be easily fixed also just by stretching out the piriformis muscle okay that is the uh, figure of four stretch can be given for this piriformis muscle 
and this can help with your sciatica pain. So that was about your piriformis muscle. Going on to the other muscles, we'll go to the orange one over here. That is the quadratus femoris. So the quadratus femoris originates at the ischial tuberosity, similar to your hamstring muscles, right? Between the greater and the lesser trochanter, it goes and attaches. So from the ischial tuberosity comes and goes and attaches to the area between the greater and the lesser trochanter. Now, if you see all the muscles, they have a very parallel direction. All of them are in the same direction. So there, this is why they help in creating the compressive force that I was talking about. Then going to some common tendons, there is the gemellus superior and inferior, which blend with your obturator internus tendon. And all of them go from a common tendon and go and attach to the greater trochanter. So again, these all of them have a common function of lateral rotation all together. Another important point I wanted to add over here is piriformis and the gluteus maximus. These are the only two muscles that cross your SI joint. Okay, something you can note down. So this is all we are going to cover about the lateral rotators of the hip joint. Important point I would like to mention is these muscles are very deep. Okay, so EMG studies are not that effective on these muscles. Hence, the data collected is quite limited compared to other superficial muscles. And another point I wanted to add about lateral and medial rotators are your glute medius, minimus and maximus. They can do lateral rotation. It's not that they can't, but these are the main pure lateral rotators, I would say. But yeah, again, then the glute medius, minimus, maximus, they can cause lateral rotation according to the hip position. That is on extension, they'll cause lateral rotation, whereas on flexion, they'll cause medial rotation. Yeah. So now let's move on to the medial rotators of the hip joint. So under medial rotators, what did we have? If you remember the main page, let's go to the main page. The medial rotators over here, they had GTG, right? The PG adducts, that was the thing for flexors and adductors, if you remember. And over here for medial rotators, it was GTG got to go, right? So now the same GTG is over here. That is the gluteus medius, tensor fascia lata and gluteus minimus, GTG, right? So over here under medial rotators, one thing we need to remember is there is a no proper muscle which has a primary function of medial rotators. Yeah, that's kind of shocking because medial rotation sounds pretty important to us. But then there is no proper one muscle which is creating medial rotation at all the times. So that's what the speciality is about the hip. As the hip position changes, the muscles take up different function. So these are the main muscles you could say, the GTG muscles, which cause medial rotation at the hip joint. Also, adductor over here is a controversial muscle. Why? Because they saw in CP patient, that is cerebral palsy patients, they had a crouch gait, right? Which is present with medial rotation. So they thought, okay, if they have medial rotation, we can just check which muscles are activating in them and we'll know which are the main medial rotators. So when they looked into it, there were like a two theories that came up. Basically, one said that due to the adductor spasticity, uh, there is the medial rotation that is happening. So adductors are the main cause of medial rotation because there is so much spasticity, there is adduction and along with adduction, there is also medial rotation. Whereas on the other side, there was another thing that due to the hip flexion, this medial rotation is occurring. Till now, what have we seen? That uh, as the hip goes for flexion, all the lateral rotators turn into medial rotators, right? So in CP patient, in crouch gait, flexion is a big component in it, right? So due to the increase in hip flexion, it causes the other muscles to go for medial rotation. So that was what was uh, proposed and this that's why the controversy exists uh, for adductors, whether they are really an important medial rotators. Okay, so that was about the medial rotators. Another small topic that I didn't want to miss out on was the trochanteric bursas. There are some bursas between your muscle and the bone, which prevents some friction that occurs during the movement. So I would just want to mention the bursas. So there is the subgluteal minimus bursa, sub meaning below. So below the gluteus minimus and the bone, there is the bursa that is on the anterior side. Okay. So this is the head of the femur and this is the anterior side. So in the anterior facet, lateral and posterior facet, there are three bursas. So basically slub subgluteus minimus bursa. Posteriorly, there is a trochanteric bursa and then in the lateral facet, there is a subgluteus medius bursa. So with that, we finish off the topic. 
Now let's quickly summarize. In the under medial rotators, we saw the GTG muscles along with the uh, controversy of the adductor muscles. We also know that there is no primary medial rotators. All the medial rotation that occurs at the hip joint is occurring with change in the hip position, right? Then we also talked about the lateral rotators. Under lateral rotators, we saw that because they are arranged in such way, they are really good lateral rotators, and also they have a compressive force. which is always constant right it won't change it does not change this compressive force does not change because it is parallel to your neck of the femur it is parallel to the neck of the femur so they have a very compressive and a stabilizing effect on the hip joint then we talked about the piriformis and its clinical significant in false sciatica then we covered some common tendons how they go and attach and cause the same lateral rotation force and then again quadratus femoris it goes and attaches to the ischial tuberosity same like your hamstring we also found out that these all muscles are very deep hence emg studies are not that effective in finding out their best function so with that we finish off the topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please like the video as it really helps me out and also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video